Hi guys, it's Charlie from Monocure 3D. Welcome to another episode of Pro Tips. Let's get straight into it. You may remember when we unboxed and reviewed the Anycubic Mono X a little while ago. If you missed it, well, here's the link. Since then, we've grabbed a few more of these very popular printers and John has been giving them a really good workout down in our print lab. I can confidently say that John is now officially an Anycubic Mono X expert. It makes sense to pick his brains and get him to share his experience and knowledge with you. Okay, John, take it away. Thanks, Charlie. So today we're gonna to talk about the Anycubic Mono X and over the months we've been collecting them. We've had this one for the longest and well, what can I say? They've been an effective printer. It's been reasonably reliable. With good maintenance, these things should keep going for a very long time. We'll have a look at the oldest one first and just compare them with the generations of the releases of the Mono X as they've come out over the months. This first one here, possibly the first thing you will notice is that the, the knobs are missing. Well, two of the knobs are missing. What we're finding with um, not just the Mono X, but also other Anycubic printers is the plastic they use for the knobs can't handle the vapors that are trapped underneath the lid here. And they start to break down and chips fall off and you get bits of black that fall off and eventually the knob completely comes off. Now you can buy third party aluminum knobs for these printers, but they're not cheap. So it would be lovely if any cubic could come to the party and actually go out and replace all the knobs that are failing on most of the printers that use this plastic. It doesn't stop you from being able to use the printer though. Trust the L spanner fixes the day. But at some point I may end up 3D printing a replacement knob that fits over the top of that uh, size bolt. But you can still finger tighten the, the screws on the vat there. They don't need to be any tighter than that. And I use the shift to make sure that that's super tight because you do not want that plate moving. The original machine that, that we bought this one here, it um, came with a protective film on the LCD screen. We did have a leak that dribbled a little bit of resin on top of that protective film and we removed it. Kind of cautious about whether we were actually removing the protective film or the polarizer. It turned out it wasn't the polarizer so we were quite relieved that wasn't the case. So at the moment I've actually got a new film on top of there which is uh, been taped on with um, some mylar tape around the edge there to seal it off and that's doing a reasonable job. But so far, I don't think we've had any other spillages from the vats. The vats are, you know, it's a time consuming process having to replace the FEP film on here because you've got to sandwich two plates around the edge of that um, PEP sheet. And that's a long time to undo the, all the bolts and then redo them all up. It keeps an effective tension on there and I don't think we've had any problems with that. It's always super careful not to leave li little bits of debris in the vat because that will puncture the, uh, the, the FEP sheet. So I, I usually do the cleaning uh, function that's built into this um, under tools and you just go into exposure and you know, get exposure for say 15 seconds and then that leaves a film on the bottom there which you can peel off. We've got a pro tips video which shows you how to do that. So that's that particular machine. There was a bearing at the top of the lead screw on the original machine. I've taken that off because um, it actually causes a little bit of binding uh, you actually want this lead screw to be free to move around because it's attached to the Z stepper motor via a coupler and that coupler should be allowed to move around. You'll see in the newer machines, there was no bearing at the top. Uh, they've probably understood that and kept it off. That's pretty much it for the old machine. The original machine, I do suspect has used a slower controller in here because the touchscreen is less responsive and the refresh on it, on that screen, is quite slow when it's showing you the layers. So I suspect it's probably got an older generation controller in there. Then we've gone to the next one that we bought, but quite a few months after the first one, we had to go and add a protective cover to that polarizer to make sure it, you know, we didn't have any spills on it. The bearings are all fine on this machine. The build plate is the same as the original build plate. We'll have a quick look at that and you'll see the surface of it is just essentially just sanded flat. A lot of people have been saying that they've been ha having issues with it uh, coming out of the box slightly bowed and they've resolved that by sanding it on a flat stone. But that's not good that um, you know they're coming out of the box with a slightly bowed plate. Fortunately, we haven't had that issue on any of the machines that we've purchased. The, the one thing I did end up doing is taking this U plate and squeezing it in slightly so that there was no gap between there and there when you tighten the screw. So there was no gap to close up and that solved a lot of problems for me as far as leveling that. 
The controller in this particular machine is definitely faster. Its refresh on the screen is a lot faster and it's more responsive on the touch screen. I don't think there was any other changes internally. The Wi-Fi works the same way. Still doesn't work in the office here. I don't think it's compatible with the um, uh, security settings on our particular Wi-Fi router. As far as cleaning these machines is concerned, if you start to see layers on your print uh, which are visible, like actual bloated out layers which are visible on the print, your best measure for that kind of situation is to actually clean as much as you can of the um, of any of the bearings on here as well as re-lubricating the lead screw. You can do that with uh, say uh, any kind of grease that you may have or you could get some of the industrial sprays which I think lithium based ones are quite good. WD-40 for cleaning these um, if you've got the uh, the gumption you can actually undo all eight screws and take these um, two linear bearings completely off their track being very careful not to allow the little balls to pop out of it. But then you can clean it with a WD-40 can to get any debris out of it. And the WD-40 has its own really light oil in it. And I find that that was quite effective at getting them to move really cleanly again. And all the issues with the prints with lines on, these, on the layers went away as soon as I did that. That's pretty much it for maintenance. And of course, always make sure that there's no resin splattered all over the components that are at the bottom here particularly at the back here where the um, end stop is, the optical end stop. Do not get any resin on there because that plastic will break down and you'll have to replace the end stop. And you don't want resin getting into the bearing of the Z stepper motor because that will seize it up completely and you'll have to get a new one. The newest machine, I think we've had this for maybe three months now. Um, the first thing I noticed on the newest machine, it uses a checkered plate. And that does in fact leave a checkered pattern on the bottom of your print. And what we've discovered is that it sticks to the base layers a lot better. With that in mind, some people have actually said, I'm having a hard time trying to remove my print from the bill plate. Hot water trick on the back of the plate or a heat gun will fix that. But your better solution is to just reduce the number of seconds that you're using for the exposure time on your base layers. Because you don't need that to have them as high on this particular machine with the checkered base plate. And that's pretty much all I can say about the machine. I think it uses the same controller as the previous generation, uh, very responsive um, touchscreen, and uh, it's been a very reliable machine. One other thing that I've done uh, over the time that we've had these machines is update their firmware. The firmware we're currently running is, under info, version 3.5.4. This particular version seems to work better for anti-aliasing if you're using that option in Chai 2 Box. I'd still believe that you need to have an exposure time of more than about 2.5 seconds for the um, anti-aliasing to work. It doesn't have the amount of memory it requires to be able to show proper grayscale on that mono screen, so it fudges it by turning on certain pixels for a bit longer or a bit shorter. It's a bit of a fudge, but it, it does work. The other thing I should mention is the, the vat on the newest machine. Instead of it being CNC milled out of aluminium, it's actually a cast aluminium block, which uses a bit less aluminium and it has larger cavities on the inside of it, which kind of reduces the ability for it to seal off any potential leaks on the FEP sheet. But it still works fine, and I'm sure it was a cost-saving um, option that Anycubics used for that. But you will notice also on the latest machine that the, the three knobs are still pretty much intact. There is a chunk that's come off one of them, um, and I'm expecting them to fail completely over the next month. So there you have it, guys. Those three machines have been my workhorse, really, for over six months, and um, they've been reliable. And needless to say, it's the only machine I know of that will start the print if you lose power. So that's a really nice feature. So yeah, if you guys are using these already, good on you. If you're not, maybe think about getting one or one of the newer ones, which I think are, are 6K now. So yeah, we might be looking at that on our, as our next printer. Back to you, Charlie. Thanks for the detailed update, John. It sounds like there's still a little room for improvement, but all in all, the Mono X is a reliable printer and John's go-to for larger resin printing jobs. Guys, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and we'll do our best to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.